great friend of mine a very good friend of mine to be honest to explain everything that she does i would actually need the whole morning and i don't have that much time therefore i would like to keep it as brief as brief as possible she is a member of parliament for sumar in como podem she is a saharawi activist she is expert in big data artificial intelligence as you can see she is always on the move so test city a big round of applause thank you morning i want to thank you all for having me today and especially uh, for inviting me today saturday after last night party so i'm gonna try guys inspire you in spanish as you know we had really complicated week in spain but we got succeed on 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 this week and we stopped something really important so i'm gonna spit big clap <laughs> So uh, I'm gonna do it in Spanish, if you don't mind. And uh, bueno, como decía, as I was saying before, I would like to thank everyone for inviting me. Thank you very much, because I'm able to share my personal experience and my political experience and my technical experience. These are three things that are strongly, strongly linked. I am lucky enough because. I am proud of being Saharawi and not only because of my identity, but because of the social construction, the political construction that I have inherited without even having chosen this. The fight in my country is a fight for human rights, a just fight, and it's a fight and it's a struggle of so many people. It is crucial to fight for human rights and especially to have ownership of the word human right. Ms. Ayuso took away from us the word freedom, but I don't want her to take away from us the word human right. I arrived in Spain at the beginning of the 2000 and I stayed here in 2007 afterwards and I was lucky enough to see the two parts of Spain. I didn't understand Spanish at first and I remember Zapatero, I remember Rajoy, I remember this Spain of two, two men that were speaking uh, with each other uh, uh, a country that wasn't diverse and that didn't have this plural identity this collective identity this Spain of Zapatero of Rajoy of economic cuts and then the movement of the 15M arrived and of course the, the people that started the 15M might say that I'm describing it wrongly, but this was a huge movement that brought to the agenda the points that can be changed throughout progressive politics, but they also showed that feminism is possible. This is something which we have to be extremely proud of because this agenda has reflected the strength that women have. But there was a lack of some certain points in this agenda that we will be able to achieve in, in these elections. Last elections, we were able to speak about rights, about all the rights that were gained by everyone and for everyone. But that, let's remember that we cannot advance in politics without working in the collective level for everyone. We can work in some coalition projects in which debate and diversity of politics has 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 a place in in this atmosphere and a big round of applause why not of course and the last elections we had this non-racist policy and this is a big important part of our policies because migrants are not numbers 
we're not data we're one more we're citizens this is a vital agenda that shows that we cannot advance in international policies as long as we stick to our id card and i spent 24 years in country with spanish parents and i can assure you that the drama that i had to go through to 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 do all the paperwork is basically nonsense taking into account the responsibility that we have with human rights in our party therefore i think it's crucial to be empathic I just don't want to remember that I'm a refugee unless I have to fight for the last croqueta, of course. But it's important to speak to each other in the same way as equals. And it's important for migrants not to speak also about non-racist policies, but it's important for us to give priority to the cross-cutting issues to feminism to anti-racist policies and in that moment in which we speak about these subjects we will be advancing as society thank you very much thank you thank you and here is where i would like to point out the importance of uh, tuiza in our my language in which different women in my village, in my country, in, uh, in the Saharawin culture, gather together to create something new. And all the progressive um, uh, polit politicians that are here, uh, Sumar and Komu, the Green parties, this is our vision, the progressiveness. We have to keep on overcoming challenges, go above the different borders because it's important to understand cross-cutting advances that we are living therefore in the next elections we just not have to speak about non-racist policies but we have to fight in the tech side of the story we have to lead the digital transformation giving importance to it and protecting the citizens because the welfare state of uh, of the earth that we're living cannot be understood in the future without a um, democratic side of the story and approach. Ms. Ayuso and other coalitions, are um, these far-right coalitions, will use this argument to polarize the society and young people it will bring as well to the side of the story these algorithms, these working algorithms. Of course, Yolanda is already working on this, but basically we have to lead this movement, this transformation, this digital transformation in a democratic way as a well-being state in which it's fundamental to understand the cross-cutting borders climate change understands nothing about borders and therefore this ecological transition this green transition this feminism movement need to be anchored so that we have an approach to under to make um, this possible for citizens uh, to to understand it to make it approachable thank you so much i know it's not easy listening to these ideas first thing in the morning but thank you very much i will be available for anyone that wants to speak to me thank you Buenos dias, buen dia a todos y a todos. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to participate, to take part in this Green Social sum Summit that gathers everyone working ongoing from the streets, from the entities, from the working areas, from the institutions, from the progressive and green parties.
and that work towards a better society in which uh, social economic justice is in the core. But it's important to understand that we are in a gathering with several women. We have heard so many voices of inspiring women. Uh, Tej, Melanie, Monica, Terry, Aina, Ricarda, after a while, Petra, Yolanda, Ada, and I would name all of the speakers here. Their work in the different areas is crucial. They were, their view uh, to understand the needs of everyone is unique. But the most important thing, the most important part is that they open a new path to a world in which everything is more near to reality because we are more represented in the political atmosphere, in the sport atmosphere, in the every area. For example, in Girona of, 2000, uh, of the 90s, I was the only girl playing football, playing soccer in the playground and I had to hear the constant comments of, oh my gosh, she's, she scored a goal. But in any case, well, I understood that my abilities playing football were conditioned by my by by being a girl so there is where i started being a feminist now these girls can reflect on this um, this and these girls these women that have won this championship and that dream of something big but it's a model for women of every age because they find in every player the strength to say, that's it, I had enough. And this I had enough strengthens feminism in Spain. In 2018, lots of women demonstrated against this unequal payment, about this violence, and this comes across every sphere and we are telling men that they cannot do everything that they want with our bodies and that we say that only yes is yes. We have sexism and the 49 women have been murdered this year already. but also denies the climate change and its impact here in Spain, in Europe, and in many other places. Unfortunately, the conservatives are taking this path as well. Actually, the leader of the Spanish Popular Party on Tuesday in the Parliament, he said, um, green transition, yes, activist dictatorship, no. I don't know what he means with activist dictatorship, but I do know what conservatives understand as green transition blocking climate and environmental policies in the name of the economy, like we saw with the nature restoration law at the European Parliament a couple of months ago. This is their so-called green transition, and this is why Greens and Progressive Forces are telling them, don't mess with the Green Deal, a project that Greens have proposed since uh, 2008 and that has been the tool to face one of the most complex crises humanity has ever faced, the climate emergency an emergency that hits especially hard here in the Mediterranean region, where climate change goes 20% faster than in the rest of the world. Climate cri crisis and social crisis are the two sides of the same coin. This is why we need a just green transition. The political solutions to, increase, uh, to the increase in the cost of living, inflation, housing, shopping basket, precarious salaries, inequalities, relate to the solutions uh, to save this planet. The redistribution of income and capital is the way to pollute less. If we design every economic policy as a climate policy and every climate policy as a social policy, we will succeed. If we put people and planetary boundaries at the center of the policy, we will get ahead. This is what SUMAR aims as part of the future progressist government here in Spain. And this is what we need to claim as green progressist forces in the next EU elections. The next five years are going to be decisive. Never before, the political decisions to be taken in such a short time would have an impact for such a long time. It's not only about stopping the attack to democracy or the rule of law and building a stronger European Union. It is also about achieving a continent of peace, 
solidarity and prosperity for all. This prosperity for all means more economic justice, more social justice, more climate justice. And we know how to do it. We are governing in many municipalities, in many regions, in some national governments. We are able to design public policies that improve the quality of life of people, to fight against energy poverty while gaining energy autonomy, to decarbonize the mobility while making it affordable for all to move around, to, the green, to green the industry while requalifying the workers. We know how to lead a just green transition where no one is left behind and we are proving it. But proving that we can do it, and very well actually, is not enough to build a progressist majority. It's not enough to convince the million of citizens that will vote in the European elections. To do so, we need to stand for the ones that only us, green progressist forces, are listening to. Scientists who are, providing with, who are proving with data that is now or never. Climate activists who are shouting our world is on fire. Workers who claim better salaries. Young people who want to have access to housing. The LGBT community who want to be who they are without fear. Women who don't want to, expose, to be exposed to gender-based violence. Migrants and refugees who are seeking a dignified life. If it is not us, who will stand for them? We need to build alliance with trade unions, civil society organizations, activists to face the upcoming challenges and also to stop this reactionary wave of the far right. During the Spanish election campaign in July, we looked into the eyes of the far right and we told them that we were not afraid from them. Also, during the Spanish election campaign, we looked into the eyes of the younger generation and we told them that we would work our asses off to build a future that shines bright. So we are ready, we just need to go to work. So let's go, and many thanks. Uh, y es un placer introducir al siguiente speaker, Florent Mercellesi, former... Uh and it's a pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Florent Marcellesi, co-chair of Verdes Equo. Thank you very much, Julia. Good morning, everyone. I am very glad to be sharing with you this space, this Green Social Summit. I am glad because I am certain that this family is growing. This family is growing and it's a growing family of people that understand that climate justice and social justice come hand in hand. This family is growing, a family of people that never loses uh, hope a big world in we are planting the 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 different uh, seeds when we have the wind in favor but also when we have the wind in counter and there are different winds i was born in april 1979 and margaret thatcher entered the government after a while the icon, the first prime minister, British prime minister, that was really the worst that the public sphere could know. Environment, working class. I worked understanding this neoliberalism that was creating this, this, this toxicity. There is no alternative, we were said, we were told. But I was lucky enough to find a political family, a green family that was never conform with this mantra, that always taught us that we can look over and beyond, that allowed us to understand that we can change the world, that we can understand that for a changing world, we have to be tender, but we have to be hard as well. Some years ago, I accepted this role, I accepted this family, and I started going um, to different parts of Spain, traveling Spain, and giving speeches about something that was not very popular at the moment. It was a um, state-of-the-art, a groundbreaking idea that was fundamental. I spoke about the ecological 
challenges, about the economic problems, reduce the working hours, reduce this working hours so that we could live better now and in the future. And to this regard, in that time, I took very seriously what people were saying. I had to be hard. Well, people said that we had to work 21 hours a week, so they said. But nowadays, I am very, really, really proud of seeing how we have been able to gather together and transform Spain in a state-of-the-art country that reduces working hours. This is the core of the program of SUMAR. In order for us to live better now and in the future, we have achieved this. And not only this, I hope that this is the cornerstone of our future government because this government is a government that cannot conform by consolidating old success. We need to advance in right. And this is what we will be able to achieve with SUMAR and with all the parties here. Let's fight for a progressive and green future. But of course, when I was deputy in the past, I went to Brussels with a new idea, with an idea nourished by all my colleagues. And we understood that economic growth has nothing to do with the solution. It is actually part of the problem. That um, those people who understand that this growth is possible is someone that is basically crazy. But I just didn't think that deputies were crazy or experts in economy therefore we understood how this growth could be could be done and therefore we spoke in Europe in Brussels about a better Europe and then we had a different encounter a new encounter some months ago and we gathered in the parliament in the European parliament in the plenary session with the president of the European Commission and with thousands and thousands of activists that fight for sustainability because the Greens are leading the debates of the future. And this is what the Greens are doing, creating the future. Because I think, I believe that, as Nelson Mandela said, Everything seems impossible until it's done, until it's possible, basically. And we are working, the different parties are working because we are experts in making the, the impossible possible. And we are the Mandela, we are the anti-toucher. And this is something that comes close to my heart, something that makes me feel useful. Because we are planting the different seeds and people are taking the seeds. And who are who are the people taking the seeds? Those who are denying the progress. And I know that it's very satisfying to plant the seed that we're going to be able to collect. But we have this mechanism. This is no fairy tale. And it is it is quite easy to plant a seed. But Together with every seed, there are some people that want to destroy our crops. Of course, there are people that try to block the way. And we have to take care of the seeds, of these changing seeds. And this is what green parties do. We face the challenges. We face hate. We face we face denial, we face sexism, we face inequalities, because if we want to create a green Europe, we have to stop this black Europe, because in order to have a green Europe, we need to stop this far right, this extreme right, and to this regard, I think that we have to be patient, but this is an urgent 
matter to approach and difficult. But from social justice, from climate justice, we will be able to make the difference from the rest of the people. We will be able to dream with a society in which everything is different so that our continent is more sustainable, more just. And I think this is what was done on the 23rd of July. We planted this seed on the 23rd and we sent a message to the whole Europe because against all odds, we stopped the far right, the extreme right. And I hope for the next European elections to to, to see how this plant grows and grows and that Europe can witness what is happening. So, therefore, we want a green Europe, we want for this plant to keep growing and we are building this new Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Equo. Thank you to all the parties that are gathered here. Muchísimas gracias, Te, Julia y Florent, por esta bienvenida. Yo creo que no podíamos empezar. Thank you very much. I think this is a great and energetic start. Muchísimas gracias. So, thank you very much. Our next speaker really wanted to be here, but 